Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss how to use k-means clustering algorithm to divide the given data set into different uh, clusters. In this case, we have been given uh, 8 data points A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, C1 and C2. We need to use Euclidean distance and k-means clustering algorithm. Also, we have been given initial centroids that is A1, B1, C1 should be considered as the initial centroids. Considering this, we need to divide the data set into different clusters over here. If initial centroids are not given, you can select any of these particular points as the initial centroids and then you can continue applying the k-means algorithm over there. Now, uh, these are the data points uh, given to us. Given this particular data points, uh, we need to calculate the distance from these particular data points to the initial centroids. Initial centroids are A1, B1 and C1. So, I will write that particular A1, B1, C1 over here. So, what we need to do is uh, we need to calculate the distance from this particular A1 to this particular 2 comma 10, A2 to 2 comma 10, A3 to 2 comma 10 and so on. Now, the next question comes in front of us is how to calculate the distance between these data points to these uh, centroids. To calculate the distance, uh, we have to use Euclidean distance as stated in the problem definition. The Euclidean distance between two points that is P1 and P2 is always equal to square root of x2 minus x1 bracket square plus y2 minus y1 bracket square over here. Now, I will discuss uh, how to calculate the distance uh, between these data points to this uh, center right here. Uh, according to this particular formula, let us assume that uh, this particular column is uh, x1 here and uh, this one is uh, y1. This is uh, x2 and this is y2. Now, uh, what we can do over here is uh, we need to put this particular values in this particular equation so that we will get the distances here. Uh, for this uh, point, data point A1 over here, the x1 is 2 and y1 is 10. x2, y2 will remain same for this particular column here. Now, x2 in this particular case is 2 and x1 is 2, 2 minus 2 bracket square plus uh, this will be bracket square over here and then uh, this one that is y2 is 10 and y1 is also 10 over here. If we calculate this particular thing, it will become 2 minus 2 bracket square plus 10 minus 10 bracket square that is 0. So, the answer will become 0 here. So, this will become 0. Similarly, I will show one more example here. This is the another example. Now, again, x2 is equal to what? Again, uh, x2 is equal to 2. We have to take the square root of over here. 2 minus x1. Again, it is 2 bracket square plus y2. y2 is 10 in this particular case. So, 10 minus 5. That is uh, y1 is 5 over here. So, that is 5. So, 10 minus 5 bracket square. Come 2 minus 2 bracket square. That is 0. Uh, 10 minus 5 bracket square is equal to, I think it is 10 minus 10 is, uh, 10 minus 5 is 5, 5 square is 25, square root of 25 is again is equal to 5 over here. So, this particular data point will become 5 in this case. So, similarly, we need to calculate the distances over here. So, once you calculate the distances, you will get all these uh, values. Similarly, we need to calculate the distance from this particular data point to this uh, centroid also, as well as to this particular centroid. So, once you calculate, you will get these particular values. Once the distance calculation is over, next what we need to do is uh, we need to assign these particular data points to one of these particular clusters. So, what we need to do is we need to uh, see the distances and the one which is having the smallest value to that we can assign the cluster. Let us say that this is the cluster number 1, this is cluster number 2 and this is cluster number 3. If you look at these particular distances, this is the smallest one. So, this particular thing will be assigned to first cluster. If you look at this particular data point, the distances are is 5, 4.24 and 3.16. So, definitely 3.16 is smallest. So, we will assign it to the third cluster and the same thing will be done for all the data points over here. So, after first iteration, we will get this particular assignment over here. So, first data point that is A1 is assigned to 1. Uh, if you look at this one, A3, B1, B2, B3 and then C2 is assigned to second cluster and A2 and C1 is assigned to third cluster over here. Now, once these assignments were done, now, we need to calculate the new centroids here. Uh, for this particular uh, first cluster, we have only one data point. So, the centroid will remain same. But when it comes to second one, that is the second cluster has 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 data points. So, we need to take the, we need to calculate the centroid here. That is 8 plus 5 plus 7 plus 6 plus 4 divided by 5. Similarly, this one, that is 4 plus 8 plus 5 plus 4 plus 9 divided by 5 
and uh, once you do this part i think for second cluster we need to do it for the third cluster also third cluster has only two data points that is 2 plus 1 divided by 2 5 plus 2 divided by 2 that is the last one so once you do the calculation you will get these are the new centroids over here once you get this particular new centroids we need to consider these centroids as the current centroids and then we need to continue from here onwards so i will make this as a current centroids now we need to calculate the distance from these data points to this particular centroids here. Again, I will write this particular centroids over here and then we need to calculate the distances here. So same formula we need to use and then we need to calculate the distance. So once you calculate the distance, again we need to check which one is the smallest one out of these particular three distances. So this one is the smallest one, so it will be assigned to first cluster here. Between these three, this is the smallest one, so it will be assigned to third cluster and same will be repeated for all the data points here. Now this is how the assignment takes place. This is called as a new cluster uh, over here. Now if you look at this particular thing, in the previous case, this C2 was assigned to second cluster, but now it is assigned to first cluster. The meaning is a data point has moved from one cluster to other cluster here. So this is not uh, at, uh, we can say that converged here. We need to calculate the new centroids again here. So how to calculate the new centroid again? In first cluster, we have two data points that is A1 and C2 here. So we need to calculate the centroid of these two things that is 2 plus 4 divided by 2 10 plus 9 divided by 2 that will be the new centroid here similarly we have to do it for second cluster and third cluster over here so we will get these three new centroids here so once you get this particular new centroid we will consider these as a current centroids before that this new clusters will be come and sit over here so that is what i have done and then we will consider this as a current centroids from this particular data point to this particular current centroids we will calculate the distances here so once you calculate the distance again we have to start assignment like between these three which is the smallest one that is definitely 1.12 is the smallest one between these three this one is smallest one so this will be assigned to first cluster third cluster and so on so this is how the assignment will look like now again if you look at here previously this particular data point that is b1 was assigned to cluster number two but now it is assigned to cluster number three cluster number one here the meaning of this one is again a data point has moved from one cluster to other cluster so we need to calculate the new centroids here so once you calculate the new centroid you will get something like this and then uh, this uh, new uh, cluster will become the current cluster here and then we need to consider this particular new centroid as the current centroids and then we need to calculate the distance to these particular centroids here so again once you calculate these particular distances we have to assign these particular data points to one of these particular clusters over here in this case, uh, this particular data point has uh, 1.94, 7.56 and 6.52 as the distances. So this is the smallest one, so it will be assigned to one here. The same process has to be followed for all the data points. After the cluster assignment, uh, it looks something like this. And if you compare the previous assignment and the current assignment, both are exactly same here. It shows that uh, all the data points have converged to these particular new clusters here. So once that is done, we need to write down the final clusters over here. The final clusters are uh, this particular A1 belongs to first cluster, B1 belongs to first cluster and C2 belongs to first cluster over here. Similarly, this A2 and C1 belongs to third cluster, remaining that is A3, B2 and B3 belongs to second cluster over here. So this is how actually we can easily use the k-means clustering algorithm with the Euclidean distance to divide the data points into different clusters here. I hope the concept is clear. If you like the video, do like and share with your friends. Press the subscribe button for more videos. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you for watching.